Hey there everybody, and welcome back to the Sakuya portion of Kuon. First things first, I do want to apologize a little bit. I I don't know if anybody else noticed, but well, I was saying the character's name incorrectly. I was saying uh, Sayuka, and kind of switching up the K and Y. It's Sakuya, and I, I will hopefully be saying it correctly for the rest of the LP. But yeah, for right now, we have explored, I'd say, maybe two-thirds of the mansion, and for this video, we're going to be finishing up that final third, and getting, well, to explore some other adjoining areas. For right now, though, we do need to figure out where we need to go next. And to do that, we should probably take a look at the items we currently have. There is one item in particular that kind of stands out, and that is the Iron Wedge that we found by the Yamabito earlier. The Iron Wedge actually serves a very particular purpose, and an even more particular purpose for the Utsuki portion of the playthrough. But for Sakuya, we will be seeing what that usage is fairly shortly. We actually have to make our way to the other side of the entrance to the Lord Suite. But for some reason it suddenly struck me that I still had the spider summon equipped. And honestly I'd rather have my fan accessible. But you may notice this small shrine right here, our altar, and we do actually have the sacred cloth to open it up. And we find yet another of these odd small discs. We still don't actually know what these are used for yet, but I'm sure we'll be finding out soon enough. But we find that this door has been barred off. But the wood is actually weak enough that we can crack open using that iron wedge. Yeah, for those that have been watching the Utsuki videos, these portions will seem very familiar. Also, some things will start to seem fairly overlapping, such as this particular Gaki. While you're playing as Utsuki, while she passes through this area, she will actually find a dead Gaki. More than likely it is this one, but sometimes we'll see something of continuity errors, I suppose, between the two playthroughs. run into or we know about from the other playthrough it is quite frankly not in any real danger but they want to pose it as such and we merely have to defeat this well extremely easy gaki it's honestly a bit strange they didn't actually give us one of the harder versions of the gaki but well, there you go Are you all right? Oh, yes, I think so. Thank you. I am Utsuki, 
I live in the shrine, not far from here. I'm Sakuya. What are you doing here? I'm looking for my father. He's the elder priest of the shrine. My sister and I came from the mountain, but I lost her. It's not safe to be alone here. I wish I could help you find your sister, but... Here, take this. It will help you. Huh? Wait. It looks similar to the one Father uses. Your father is the priest, correct? Here, take this. My father gave this to me. You may find it useful. <clears throat> Thank you. Please, be careful. I will. And thank you. Take care. So much like the Utsuki portion of the game, this is where Sakuya gets the Sacred Cloth for Earth, which will give us access to pretty much the rest of the doors in the manor. Though obviously, as those that have been watching both videos saw, there were some pretty clear differences between what happened there. Also we get, I think, a second demon suppressing spike. Also if we check this nearby little shrine here, instead of the map of the manor, this time we are going to be getting the silkworm disc. But yeah, it's a bit odd. I mean, uh, Sakuya still gave Utsuki some cards, but as those who have been watching the other videos have seen, one of the cards that uh, Sakuya gave to Utsuki was the very powerful Saiga Summon. As to why Sakuya never uses them or never has access to them, it's honestly a bit hard to say. But not too much in this area. Just a nice little koi pond, possibly. Well, it sounds like distant children's voices singing. is definitely cryptic, but what we want is to read this letter behind them. L addressed to the lady of the house, it talks about, well, the small spikes, or the, uh, I should say, the spikes and the small discs that we've been finding are apparently used to open some very important doorway. But it seems we are actually still missing a few of them. But in this small locked off room, we find some more spell cards for the more powerful Heian spell. We also find the dying words this particular gentleman right here. Apparently he wasn't looking to be gawky food and locked himself in here. But the most important thing is this riddle scroll, or hint scroll. It pretty much tells us what the answer will be to using the discs and the spikes for the nearby shrine entrance. It may not 
make a lot of sense right now, but once you actually see the puzzle, it will make a little bit more sense. Yet again, much like the other puzzles, not too, too difficult. Also, I was hoping to look at the map, but apparently this is not actually considered part of the manor house, but instead is considered a completely different area. But otherwise, amid all this bamboo, is not much of anything outside of a few grisly impaled corpses. It's our little friend who we have not seen in quite some time. We can't get in from the front. Something is here. Take a look at this. I really can't get over how oddly worded his voice acting is in comparison to most of the other voice acting. But here is the shrine entrance door that we've been told about. We can see that there are three missing indentions, or three indentions where it looks like something is missing, I should say. But we will be coming back here later on. For right now, we do have to find, I think, one more disc and one more spike, or just one more spike. And for that, we're going to have to do, well, some backtracking. Back to... Well, let's just say the other side of the mansion. Yeah, this was the room where we ran into Sakuya's brother early on. And for those that may remember, there was this earth sealed door. More or less just to get some extra, but rather nice items. But our next destination is actually going to be behind the Lord's Suite itself. So we can see here there's not too many other locked doors or places we have not been. So, let's see what's waiting behind the door that's apparently, well, something worse than a gaki. I guess before we fight whatever is worse than a gaki, we still have to do fight a few gakis. Also, I'm not exactly certain here, but something just started to affect the frame rate a little bit, so I do apologize for that. Also, I'm not sure why they felt the need to just really pile on the cannon fodder enemies. Demons and all evil spirits. I mean, technically, you can actually skip about 80% of the combat in Kuan, 
But in reality, that means you're actually going to have to sacrifice a lot of healing items. And especially for Sakuya, her playthrough can actually be very needing in regards to healing items rather than meditation. I know it may not seem like it now, but trust me, as we progress through the game, some portions of her playthrough in comparison to uh, Utsuki's are tremendously more difficult. demons and all evil spirits. Hmm. It's one of those large wicker chests that we saw before. Hopefully there's not another dead body in it. Nope. It's just a trap. Yeah, this entire room exists merely to... I guess trap you. In a... Another tedious gawky fight. I guess it is rather strange that we are finding multiple of these wicker chest just lined with silk. But it's time to see what is behind the sealed door. Was that a bell? Yeah. It was a rather nasty tempest. Banish demons and all evil spirits. Also, for some reason that tempest caused the door to be blocked off, so we are kind of trapped in here. So maybe we can get out of that open window. Say hello to our first boss of the game. This is Lord Fujiwara himself, or at least his mangled and possessed corpse. And for him, we actually do want to pull out the more powerful spells. We finally get to see the Ice Spear spell. Does a great job of immobilizing the enemy, does a massive amount of damage, and is actually really accurate. And you really do not want to give Fujiwara a chance to attack. He will kill you in about two hits, and he is extremely fast. You want to take him down with whatever powerful spells you have. But with him down, we can now snatch the bell. And we can also find... Or at least take a quick look at Fujiwara's corpse.
But for some odd reason, the blockade to the door is now open. And that means we can now safely get out of the room and leave behind the Lord's corpse behind us. just killed one of the Fujiwara clan, it might be a bit pertinent to talk a bit more, as since they were actually, well, historically accurate and a rather powerful family during the Heian period, which lasted roughly about 400 years. They came into power as regents under, well, a rather young emperor, and through the marrying off of their daughters to other powerful political figures and such, they actually managed to stay in relative power and control with Japan for, like I said, a good 400 years. They mostly acted as regents while a emperor usually stayed as something of a figurehead making lesser decisions for the country. It actually came up as a term known as a cloistered emperor who lived in, well, a sheltered environment, but still kept up some relative facade of being the emperor, while other political figures, normally under the Fujiwara clan, would actually have relative overall control of the decisions for the country. Yeah, with our newfound bell, we can now head back to Ayako's room, and hopefully have her open the door for us. A sinister atmosphere shrouds the entire manor. What happened here? I... I have no idea. But... For some time now, I've... I've been hearing a song. At nightfall. And disease has spread through this place. The hungry. They roam the manor at night. Then... Oh! When I hear that song, I fear I'll be killed, or worse, abducted. We found you. Just like that, Ayaka is gone. As to what took her just now, it's a bit hard to say. The red robe almost makes me think of Utsuki, but... Well, that definitely wasn't Utsuki. Now, at least for our troubles, we find the last metal spike. And that means we actually have the three discs and three spikes that we need to get inside that shrine. But something odd happens on our way back. Sukuya! Sakuya, I've decided to help this child find her sister. I'm going to explore the manor again. You are? This is wonderful news, isn't it, Utsuki? Yes! Sakuya, if you're looking for Dochin, I think he is at the shrine.
I'll meet up with him there. Very well. Utsuki, are you ready to go now? Yes. Be careful. So it seems that Sakuya's brother is wanting to help out Utsuki, which, while noble and chivalrous, might not actually be the best idea. Hopefully, though, he'll be able to defend himself. I have some faith in his abilities. So I could almost swear that body moved. Maybe it was just my imagination. But it is now time to figure out the puzzle for the door. Yet again, there, there's only three discs, so there's not that many variations that we can actually do. But it's actually fairly easy if you do read the riddle, or the hint they give you. First, we want to put the silkworm in the center top. For the crow, we want to put on the lower right with the other animals. And for the old disc, we want to put on the left with the people. It opened! I wonder where this could lead to? I don't know. And I think we're gonna have to hold off on finding out about that for later. I think for right now, though, would be a very good time to save. So, hopefully you will join me next time as we continue on with Sakuya, Sakuya in Kuan.